I've got something that I believe that every person in this room tonight, something God's given me, I want to give to you. And also for those in K through sixth grade, the Christmas program practice will start tonight for K through sixth grade. It'll be divided into two groups. They need to be here at 5 30 tonight. K through sixth grade Christmas program practice. Be here at 5 30 tonight. Matthew chapter 3, please. Find verse number 13 with me. And if you're able to stand, I want you to. If you cannot stand, you may remain seated. Matthew chapter 3. Then cometh Jesus from Galilee to Jordan, unto John, who baptized of him. But John forbid him, saying, I have to be baptized of thee, and comest thou to me. Jesus answering, said unto him, Suffer to be so now. For thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness that he suffered. And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water, and all the heavens were open unto him. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lightning upon him. And all a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Father, would you please help me with the Holy Spirit's power this morning to preach the eternal truths of the Word of God. It's not my words that will help or convert or last, it's yours. So help me be anointed this hour. Be a heaven of blessing to your people. Thank you for that. Thank you for this special day. Deal with hearts and with lives to be changed with the cause of Christ. With thanksgiving, I pray. Amen. You can be seated, please. Can you hear in the back all right? John, can you hear on the left? Can you hear? Yeah. Too. That's great. Yes, amen. Here is one of the places in the Bible where we see God in his triune form. We see God the Father speaking from heaven. We see God the Holy Spirit descending in the form of a dove. And we see God the Son in the water being baptized. So we have God in his triune form. But also, this is one case in the Bible, out of three times in the Bible, where God speaks with an audible voice from heaven about His Son. And every time that God speaks about His Son, all of it from heaven. Here in this text, also in John chapter 12, and again in Matthew 17, He says basically the same thing. This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Would you say those words with me? This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Please. I want to talk to you today just about that, those few words for a few minutes. You recall when you were a child growing up, back when Abraham Lincoln was president? <laughs> Seems that long ago. And uh, while you were growing up, you looked forward to birthdays and Christmas. Because if you were going to, you know, you got gifts. That's just what children are excited about now. When you get older, you get more excited about getting and watching them get. But when you're a child, you, you got excited about getting those things. And how many of you would go down maybe uh, before Christmas Eve and you'd take that box, had your name on you would shake it, and you would measure it, and you pretty well had figured out what you were going to get. You said, boy, this is it. This is that train that I've been wanting. This is that little race car. This is years ago. We, we, we have those super stations all over all those stuff now, PlayStation and all those things. And so, but you think, like, I'm going to get this. Well, here's that racing car track I've always wanted. But you know you had to wait until the New Year's, or excuse me, Christmas Eve night or Christmas morning, and, and then you'd go down and in all that excitement, you know, you couldn't sleep, you know, and you, you couldn't rest because you were excited about what you was going to find when, when you opened that box. I mean, you, it just excited you. Now, uh, so those were things that excited me. Do you recall that when you opened it? And you recall the joy of a gift that you anticipated. <coughs> now there's sometimes on that you've been disappointed when you thought of a race driver with a pair of socks. <laughs> Can you remember those years? When all you had was a pair of socks? I thank all those pair of socks, aren't you? But you opened it. And you were happy, but you looked up at Mother and Daddy, and there's something wrong with them. They were crying. And you said to them, What's wrong? And say, I'm just so happy. It didn't make sense to us, did it? When they were said, 
joy that they enjoy, they are happy. And you have the same expression your parents had. You said, I'm just happy. I don't mean to humanize God this morning, but though he did make himself human to all of us. But I wonder this morning if we could just somehow roll back the curtains of heaven. Look at the face of God himself this morning. Would there be an expression on his face that said, I'm well pleased? Would there be an expression on his face that says, I'm happy? about that in your life when I look at your life. And I want to tell you about four or five things and I'll be very brief this morning I promise you. If I can even preach it all. That God would look out and God would just say by doing this or expressing himself to me, I'm just well pleased in doing this. Take your Bible if you would please return to Colossians chapter 1. Colossians. I don't have you to turn to many places this morning we found it. Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, chapter 1, we'll be just for a moment. I want to tell you that God is well pleased this morning, if you looked on his face, in the way that he sent his son to earth for you. Colossians 1.19 talks about Jesus Christ when it says, For it pleased, you see that? It pleased the Father, Colossians 1.19, It pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. When God brought his son to this world through a virgin birth, God looked at him and he said, It pleases me in my son all fullness dwells. Can I remind you of something that I believe you know to be true? And it is essential for heaven because if Jesus Christ did not come in the flesh, we don't have a Savior, ladies and gentlemen. He's not God in the flesh and we have no hope whatsoever. But can I tell you this morning that when God brought his son in the world, he made him fully God. But he made him fully man just as well. Could I just give you two illustrations of that? Because I must have wanted something else. That it's an unusual that you see God resting on a well in John chapter 4 because he's tired. But when a sinner came to him, he gave her the well of salvation for him. Isn't it amazing when the uh, disciples came to him during the storm? And he was asleep because he was weary. But that's it, God. He got up and walked to the front of the ship and he seized the storm because he's got up. So God was pleased to give us his son that him all the fullness should dwell with. Take your Bible to Isaiah chapter 53. And this one may amaze you or shock you, should I say. In Isaiah chapter 53. I want you to find this because I want to read it to us very slow this morning. Could I remind you before I read these verses, you can understand almost how that a father will be pleased at what he gave for his children. Would you not understand that? Is that not a natural understanding? That you mean a father would be pleased when he gave his children? Now, with that in mind, I want you to start reading Isaiah 53, verse number 4. Surely he's borne our griefs, talking about Christ, and he's carried our sorrows. Yet we see the stick him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. All we have actually been gone astray. We've all turned everyone to his own way. The Lord has laid upon him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed, and we he was afflicted. Yet he opened not his mouth. He's brought as a lamb to the slaughter, as a sheep before his shears is done, so he opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison, from judgment. Who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off from the land of the living. For the transgression of my people was he stricken, and he's made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death, because he's done no violence, neither was any deceit in his mouth. Yet he tell me the word, please the Lord to bruise him. That God looked down at the sacrifice of his own son, and God said, I'm pleased with what Jesus Christ did at the cross. Can I tell you? This morning, the wages of sin is dead, but the gift of God's eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. But it <coughs> pleased the Father to give His Son for you and for me. Yesterday, I was visiting, and someone called me on my car phone while I was visiting out in the Wartburg area and said, There's a man 
and here in a hospital who wants to talk with you. I spoke with a gentleman several months ago. He did not remember who I was. I remember someone who came to this church. He didn't know how to get in touch with me. My name didn't to get in touch with me. And they called me. I went down to see him. He's 66 years of age. And uh, he's having a hard time breathing. He thinks that life is short. And he said, Preacher, I've got to know before I leave this world if I'm saved or lost. He said, now I knew that when I talked with you previously, you had spoken to me about this. He said, I don't want to ask you again. Could you tell me again? And I told him how to come to know the Lord Jesus Christ. That 66 year age man, he bowed his head in his bed yesterday and trusted Jesus Christ to save him as an order to save him. I started out the door and uh, he said, I want to thank you for making it so plain to me. I can understand. Then he said something to me that no one else has ever said to me. I started out the door. He said, Preacher, I want to tell you I'm betting on you. I didn't know how he bet going on. <laughs> but you know what he was saying? He said, Richard, I believe you're telling the truth. And I'm staking all my eternity on what you told me. And I want to tell you something this morning, folks. You can stake all your eternity on what God said right here. And I have. I placed all my hopes, all my future, all my eternity. Because what God said in this blessed book about he was pleased to be bruised for me. And he pleased to be bruised for you. And pleased the Father. I don't understand it. Could you look at the face of the Father this morning? And didn't you see him? He said, I'm pleased with the sacrifice of my son. There's a third thing I want you to see. I believe that God is pleased. When you look at his face, you see him almost smile when his children decide to trust him by faith. Remember the story of Solomon where God came to Solomon and said, Solomon, I'll give you anything you want. Just ask me. And Solomon said, Lord, I don't want anything except an understanding heart. I'll be able to have a rule of your children and how to be a good king. That's what I want. And the Bible says that the saying pleased God. He said, Solomon, you've not asked me, and I'm pleased. You didn't ask me for things. You didn't ask me for riches. But folks, you didn't ask for those things. I'm going to give you everything you're ever going to need. I'm going to give you wisdom. I'm going to give you riches. I'm going to give you a kingdom. I'm going to give you an inheritance that's eternally forever. I'm going to give it to you. But said, I'm so pleased that Solomon didn't ask me things. He only wanted me. I'm going to tell you something. God's pleased, folks. When in your life, you don't want things. You just want him. When you don't want anything for yourself, you just want him. God's pleased with that. Now, in Hebrews chapter 11, verse number 6, without faith it's impossible to please God. He that cometh to God must believe he is. He's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. God's pleased when his children just have faith in him. Our nation is in turmoil this morning over an election. I'll mention two things about that. One of them said this. The answer is not in Bush. The answer is in the one who dwells in the bush. And the answer is not in door, but in God. Amen. And the answer is not in the White House, it's in the church house. Amen. Amen? Because the heart of a king is in the hand of the Lord. Right? That's exactly where the answer is. Solomon had done many things on the Lord of God. And I want to tell you, the Father is pleased. He's pleased. When you can't see the way, but you'll still trust him. We don't understand the divorce, but you still believe him. When you can say with Job, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. When you're sick and don't know why, but you'll still love him. When you're facing things that seem impossible, but you'll still believe him. When you walk in the dark, but you'll still keep on walking. So, elementary seemingly, but so true I believe it is. And I just thought this illustration. I mean, we always had children, we know, especially the boys. The boys are to be tough. The boys aren't able to shoot rifles and go hunting and go fishing. Girls are more station. That's good preaching, amen. Clean the house. Fix the food, amen. Somebody if you got a man to say amen, you don't like Thank you. <laughs> and men are take your wives out three times a week for you, amen. All right, yeah, man. I've got, I've got me some banana food. But I can remember my kids were little, especially my boys. I put them up on the steps somewhere. I'd say jump. I'd say jump. I mean, it took them three or four times to jump. So they jump and I'd catch them. They learned to trust them. And I want to say, I've learned to trust them. Sometimes I had to jump, didn't know where I was going to land. So I always want to tell you that he always caught me. God was pleased. 
last time you spoke to town either work with somebody, brought a hungry person or something to eat, clothes someone had to eat, need to shoes, or clothes, give beat shoes someone had to eat, need to shoes. When's the last time you thought of a small child and never eaten anything like that? Nothing to care When's the last time you spoke town that you ever been a party person? I believe with such sacrifices, God. something in my hands I've not held for 25 years. There's more medals for this here, and I have no idea what some of our, some of you in the United States Navy personally don't have to service want to sing. This is my daddy's declaration of war. He served on the U.S. at a bunker hero. He was hit by a suicide plane. I've seen the scars of the his face. This is his purple heart. My sister gave him to me this week. He's been cut, kept up in that place. And these are mine now. The treasure in the house. Pass on to my kids. And I pulled out of my hand and I treasured it. For the sacrifice I just made. This morning I hold a greater treasure in my heart. Sacrifice the Son of God made on the tree for me and God for a sacrifice. Preacher, I've rejected the Lord's gift in the past. Would he still willing to accept me? Can I just say this? The Lord is not slackness when he's promised the Son of God's slackness. He's not suffering us, us for not willing that any, you're in the end, should perish. Preacher, I've just not been looking for a Christian. What about me? It pleased God, 2 Samuel 12, too, to make you what we do, to make you his people. <laughs> it pleased God. If I've lost my faith, if I've lost my way, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us, to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I've got to show more things this morning. Give him to you. Give me two veterans up here. Two veterans, Don. Give me another veteran.
got saved, I know Jesus would have come up. I would have died to hold me to the court. Would you raise your hand? Well, fine, just a second. I know that. I'm glad you know that. Now, if you don't know that, you ought to know that before you leave this building. You ought to get that settled. And I'll help you get it settled if you'll let me. All I can do is, is to help you. I can't make you do it. You've got to do what you can. You've got to volunteer. You've got to volunteer. So I'll believe that picture. I'm back down here. I'll believe that's true. What God has said. I'm talking to Christians this morning. Are you going to get your life in the Lord today? Folks, I want to tell you as Christians, we pay very little in sacrifice to serve God. God help us to give more of ourselves. How many of you can say amen to that picture? If you're here and you're lost this morning, you can raise your hand. You know you're saved. Would you please meet me at the front? Let me take the word of God. Would you be a man of God, a woman of God, to get that set? If you're a teenager, an adult, girl, would you come? Let me help you with that. As a Christian, you can come pray about something. I want you to come here and get your life in the Lord. If you've been saved, you've never been in public in a church service, I want you to make it public this morning. If you need to join this church, I want you to come this morning. That's something you ought to do. You've got to do it this morning. You've got to do it now. Our heads are bowed, our eyes are closed. You'll just put your feet back up me. Folks will get out just for a second. If you'll do that for me and sit up straight. Put your feet underneath you. They're going to play for us. If you need to come, you come out of your seat. You come on. You come on and just play for us. You come on while we just a moment. You come on just a moment while we're waiting for you. Just a moment we're waiting just for you. I'm sure if you die, you're going to make it. you want to get that son in your heart right now? There's folks here who have been saved and you've been talking about Christ has done for you. Maybe you need to get baptized this morning. I want you to come. You need to join. If you're not with this church family, I want you to come. You come. We're going to stand and sing. And while we stand and sing, I want you to keep on coming. You keep on coming. While we stand, while we sing.